probability is one of the foundations of machine learning. As we know, deep learning is one kind of statistical learning. So it's very important to learn some basic rules of probability. In fact, probability is a very interesting topic and exists in our daily life. Let's start with the three axioms of probability. Axiom is a statement or proposition which is regarded as being uh, accepted or self-evident. So we don't need to prove the axiom. Axioms are considered as truth. And we can use axiom to prove other theory. So actually finding an axiom are very difficult. So the uh, researchers has been through many arguments and now finally achieve an agreement. So there are three axioms. So before we see the axiom, there's a definition. Uh, given an event E in a sample space S. So sample space is the union of all possible events. Okay, so given this definition, the first axiom is that the probability of event E happen is between 0 and 1. So all the output of the probability function is between 0 and 1. The second axiom is that the probability of the uh, union of the sample space, which means that all the event happens, all the events in the sample space, is equal to 1. So sum of the, uh, all the events in a sample space, uh, the probability of all the events in a sample space is equal to 1. The third axiom uh, uh, we need to pay attention is that uh, it's, more, it's, very, it's a little bit special. Uh, it's that the uh, uh, additivity, uh, any countable sequence of mutually exclusive events. So what is mutually exclusive? which means that the event uh, will, won't happen together, huh? won't happen at the same time. Right? So those are mutually exclusive. Huh? For mutually exclusive events, huh? the probability of all the mutually exclusive events is the sum of the, its original probability. Okay. So that's the third axiom. Mathematicians define a special kind of variable for probability, which is called a random variable. A random variable is a variable whose values are numerical outcomes of a random phenomena. Right. So it's, we can say that a uh, random variable is a right, variable to save the output of a random process. The strict definition of random variable is a research topic. So generally, we, we just understand it as a variable for probability. Okay, so there are two kinds of variables. First is the discrete variables. So if the variable is discrete, the probability function of the discrete variables is called the probability mass function, PMF. So for all the events in a sample space, if we sum the probability max function of all the random variable x, it will be equal to 1. Because the sample space, right, sum of the PNF of the events in a sample space is equal to 1. The second type of random variable is continuous. So the, for the continuous variable, we define a probability density function. So we can define that if a random variable lies between a range uh, between A and B, then we need to calculate the integral of the probability density function to get the probability of the random variable X. Now let's talk about expected value also known as expectation. The expectation of a random variable x uh, 
the formula is here. It's actually uh, a weighted sum of the output and uh, and the probability, the occurrence probability. So its expectation is actually the possible uh, output of a random process, uh, the outcome uh, multiplied by the occurrence probability. Uh, so and the sum all the product together, then it's the expected value uh, of this random process. Okay, so let's see an example here. Uh, here's a rolling dice. And we want to calculate the expected value of uh, the number right, shows on the die. Huh? There are six sides, six sides of a die, right? Huh? So each side has one sixth probability to show up. Huh? So let's multiply the value uh, on each side with one sixth the occurrence probability. So it's 1 multiplied by 1 6 plus 2 multiplied by 1 6 until 6 multiplied by 1 6. And the final expected value of rolling a, rolling a dice is 3.5. So it's very normal that uh, you got a, a 40 point uh, expected value even if all the outputs, all the outcomes are integer. Expected value is a simple but a very useful concept. Uh, you can use expected value to evaluate or uh, to estimate the return of a random process. Let's play the expected value of play in Rolay. Uh, suppose you can bet one dollar on single number on each number. Here's a table. Uh, you can bet on any number uh, between zero and uh, thirty-six. So there are totally uh, 37 options. And if you win, uh, you can get $35 payoff uh, if you win. Uh, not a bad deal, right? It's a good deal. You just bet $1 and get 35 payoff. Uh, so what's the expected value? Uh, and it's simple. Uh, it's just minus 1 multiplied by 36, 37 plus 35 uh, multiplied by 37, uh, 137 and the result is minus 137 so actually you get a minus expected value which means you will lose money eventually that's the secret of casino they always play the game that have positive expected value Now let's talk about variance. The variance of a random variable x is the expected value of the square deviation from the mean of x. So actually we use the expected value to estimate the change of the random process. So here's the definition of variance. The variance is that the random variable minus the mean uh, minus the mean uh, which is the deviation from the mean and then we calculate the square of the deviation right and uh, calculate the expected value we can use variance to estimate the divergency or inconsistency of a random process Okay, we can actually the mean is the expected value of random variable x, right? So we can use uh, we can replace the mean with the expect value of x. Okay, then we can expand this term. Now we can expand the square. So it's the x uh, x square minus two x e of x and uh, the square of the uh, uh, expected value of x so the expected value uh, of the expected value is still the expected value uh, so the term becomes the expected value of uh, x squared uh, minus 2 multiplied by the e of x uh, the 2 
expected value of x and the square of the expected value. So eventually, finally, we can get this formula. So the variance is actually the expected value of the square of x minus the square of expected value of x. As we know, the prediction error of a machine learning model can be decomposed into bias and the variance. Here are four pictures to show the difference between uh, high bias, uh, low bias, and the uh, high variance, uh, low variance. So this column shows the uh, result with high variance. From those two pictures, uh, we can see that the result with high variance or the uh, shots uh, are more divergent. Uh, so high variance means high divergence. Now we know the mathematical definition of variance and we have better understanding of uh, bias and the variance. So the best case is that your model prediction has very low error huh, and uh, have both low bias and the low variance. If your model is low bias but have high variance, then uh, your results will be uh, scatter around the center point if unfortunately you have a very high error and uh, then you will have both high bias and high variance so your uh, result will uh, scatter off and far away from the center point okay if you have high bias but low variance then you were results will concentrate but still far from the center point covariance covariance is a measure of the joint variability of two random variables in other words we can use covariance to measure the relationship between two random variables we can see if they are positive related or negative related so here's the formula. Uh, that's the covariance of two random variables x and y. Uh, the definition is that we need to calculate the uh, expected value of the deviation from mean, right? And uh, for both variables, so calculate the expectation of the deviation of uh, the variable x minus the uh, mean of x. Uh, and then the uh, expectation of y minus the uh, the mean of y. We can reformulate this uh, formula into the expectation of the product of x and y minus the product of expectation of x and expectation expectation of y. Uh, so this is covariance. Okay, here are some examples of different covariance. Uh, if the both uh, variables are positive covariance, then the increase, uh, suppose we have x and the y variable, the increase of x also increase, uh, y also increase if x increase, uh, so it's positive covariance. Uh, if they are negative covariance, uh, the increase of x uh, uh, may lead to the decrease of y. Uh, so they are uh, negative covariance. Uh, so weak covariance, which is looks like a scatter plot. Uh, so it's not very correct. It's very uh, divert, divergent. Yes, it's very diverse. Another measure of variation is a standard deviation. Standard deviation, uh, which symbol is sigma, is the root of variance. Let's see an example of uh, standard deviation. Here's a distribution uh, called the normal distribution. Normal distribution is the most common uh, probability distribution. Here is the uh, sigma. The number is the probability that fall into this range. So we have a 34.1% probability uh, fall into the range between 0 and uh, 1 sigma. A low standard deviation means is 
uh, more close to the mean. So there are 68.2% uh, probability that fall between the uh, minus one sigma and uh, one sigma. And 95% uh, fall between the uh, um, minus two to two sigma. Okay, and uh, if we consider the uh, three sigma and the minus three sigma, uh, 99.7% fall into this range. So there's a famous rule called the 60A or 95, 99.7 rule. Perhaps the most famous application of sigma is the six sigma, which was proposed by Motorola. Six sigma is used to control the uh, manufacturing process. It is a system that can help to uh, make high quality product. The goal of six sigma, uh, six sigma is to make sure that a product has six sigma chains to be free of defects. So all the perfect products should be fall into this range. Here's the upper limit and the lower limit. So we need to control the manufacturing process to make sure that 99.9966% chains that the product is free of defects. Now let's look at set theory and the probability. Set theory is usually explained using this picture. This is called the Venn diagram. Okay. So suppose we have set A, or this circle represents set A, and uh, this circle uh, represents set B. So set A and set B has an intersection, uh, has an intersection area. Uh, so this symbol is called intersection. Uh, A intersection B. Uh, so the elements in this area uh, uh, exist in both set A and set B. Okay, so another concept is the union. Union means that all the elements in set A or set B or in both set and B are in this union. So union, union include all the areas in, inside the two circle. So we can uh, apply the set theory to probability. So the circle, uh, the A circle represents the occurrence of event A and the B circle uh, represent the occurrence of event B. Uh, the A intersection B means that both event A and event B happen at the same time. Let's see how to calculate the probability. Uh, suppose we want to calculate the probability of A union B. Uh, that is equal to that probability of A plus the probability of B happen uh, minus the probability of both A and B happen. That's how we calculate the uh, event uh, let A union B. A or B or both A B happen. Uh, that's the A probability of A union B. Uh, one thing to note is that the probability of A intersection B is usually simplified as PAB. So if you see PAB is not a multiplication, it means the intersection. Okay. One more important concept is the conditional probability. It's called the probability of event A given B has occurred. Here's the notation of the conditional probability. So A given B occurred. The condition means B has occurred. <laughs> Conditional probability is very important in machine learning. We, we can use it to train models. We will uh, talk about more about this later. So the uh, probability P, A, B, or the A given B can be rewrite as this formula. It's actually the uh, A intersection B divided by B. So the, we can use the conditional probability to calculate the PAB or P intersection B 
uh, p of a intersection b uh, because we can multiply the conditional probability with probability of a uh, pb uh, and or we can uh, multiply the p event p uh, given uh, a have occurs uh, by the probability of uh, event a so this is important uh, we can use conditional probability to calculate the uh, intersection probability of a b Sometimes we want to calculate the joint probability of many events. Uh, that is, we want to calculate the probability of many events happen at the same time, uh, happen together. We can use the chain rule of probability to calculate the joint probability. Okay, so here's an example. So let's calculate the probability of A1 intersection A2, A3 to AN. That's the A1 to AN, the joint probability. Let A1 to AN happen together. So we can first use the probability of A1 happen multiplied by the conditional probability that A2 happen given A1 occurred. So then multiply by the third uh, term that a3 happen given a1 a2 happen uh, until the last term that a n happen given all previous event happen this is the chain rule of probability uh, we can show you why this uh, formula work uh, the second term is equal to that p uh, a1 intersection a2 right uh, divide oh, sorry let me fix it divide by the APA2 EA1 and the third term is equal to P of the A1 A2 intersection A3 happen oh, divide by p of a1 a2 and we can remove the term All right we can remove the denominator using the previous numerator so this is the chain rule of probability another important concept is mutually exclusive if two events are mutually exclusive this means that the intersection of those two events is zero okay so let the probability of the intersection of event a and event b is equal to zero and then event a and b are mutually exclusive this implies that the union of a b the union of event a and event b is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B. Let's see the independence of events. Two events A and B are said to be independent if the probability of their intersection, PAB intersection, is equal to the product of their individual probabilities. Uh, here's the formula. The probability of A intersection B, uh, if the two events are independent, then it's equal to P of A uh, multiplied by P of B. Uh, so the A and the B is the product uh, of P of A and P of B. Uh, using this formula, we can uh, derive that the conditional probability that P given A B given B happened is equal to just P A, right? Because we know that the conditional probability is because the P A B divided by P B. So we can remove the P B and then it's just P of A. Bayes' rule is widely used in machine learning. 
Remember, we have introduced the five tribes of machine learning. Base rule is the foundation of the Bayesian. Here's the formula of base rule. It's based on conditional probability and quite intuitive. So the base rule says that the probability of A given B has occurred is equal to uh, the product of probability of B given A uh, multi multiplied by probability of A or uh, divide, divide by probability of B. Here's a simple proof. Remember that the conditional probability right, A given B has occurred is equal to this, uh, this term. Uh, P and B divide by P of probability of B. Right? Uh, so the probability of P and B, uh, P intersection B, is equal to the probability of A given B multiplied by PB or uh, probability of B given A multiplied by PA. So actually A and B are interchangeable. Uh, so that's the base rule. So how to apply base rule in machine learning? In machine learning, uh, the probability function is a model. Uh, so P is a model. And uh, suppose we have an image. Uh, suppose we are doing image recognition. So if an image is coming, we want to classify into classify the image into uh, one of the default uh, classes. Uh, suppose we have uh, two classes, cats and dogs. Okay, so using the uh, base rule, we can view the A, even A is class. Uh, and uh, even B are pixels of images. Uh, sometimes we call features features uh, you can it's usually pixels of images usually we will extract features of okay let me rewrite uh, features of an image Okay, so the class uh, maybe cat or dog, right? So if an image is coming, uh, we want to predict the probability that it belongs to a dog uh, or a cat. Uh, so that's the uh, machine learning model. After defining the model, the question is how to learn, how to train our model. Then we can use base rule to train our model. So this term of B given A uh, is actually the training data. Uh, we are doing supervised learning. Uh. So in this case is the P B uh, the P of B given A has occurred is the training data. It means that it's the uh, we have no the label A, right? And uh, given the label A, we have see the pixels, uh, the features B, uh, uh, the probability of features B, right? Uh, so this this term uh, represent the training data. This is the image, uh, the pixel, the features, even features uh, given that the label A has occurred. Right, so it's the, the probability is the training data. And they multiply by the class uh, probability. In other words, P of A is the percentage of the class A uh, samples in the training data. Okay, so in machine learning, class A is also called, uh, P of A is also called Prior 
and uh, P of B given A is called likelihood. And uh, P of B is called evidence. This is how a uh, base rule applied to machine learning. Let's see an example of base machine learning algorithm. It's called the naive base classifier. Suppose we have a model which can give us the probability of being class K given observation X. So the probability model can give us the uh, probability that uh, given feature vector X, uh, what's the probability of this input belongs to class K? And using the base rule, we can rewrite this formula here, right? So the feature vector has, I suppose the feature vector has n features. So it's a vector from x1 to xn. Then to calculate the probability, we can use the chain rule of probability. So the probability Here's an important thing to note uh, that we only care about the numerator uh, of this formula. We, we don't care about the denominator because it doesn't change. Uh, so in practice, we only care about it, the, this term. Uh, and this term is equal to the joint probability of class K and the uh, feature vector. Okay, so we don't care. Uh, P of X. Okay, so now let's focus to calculate the joint probability of class CK and the feature vector and use the chain rule to expand, uh, expand the formula. Now we need to uh, make an important assumption to solve this equation. The important assumption behind the naive base classifier is that uh, it assumes that all feature all features are independent. So that's why it's called naive, right? Remember, if all the features are independent, then we can just uh, multiply right, their features, their probabilities together. So if all the features are independent, then the joint probability, we can recalculate the joint probability using just the uh, probability of individual feature. Okay, so our model becomes, uh, we, we will use the likelihood, right? Huh? We will use the likelihood in the phase theory because we will give a supervised training data. Uh, so given the training data that is already belong to class K, or we calculate the probability of each feature and multiply them together because we assume they are independent. <clears throat> so this is the model of naive base. We still need to choose a probability distribution for the function P. Usually we choose a normal distribution. So this is a naive base class of year. So, uh, but for complicated tasks like image recognition, usually the uh, features are somehow correlated, uh, they are relevant. Uh, so the independence assumption is not suitable for uh, images, uh, but this works in some problems. We can use graph to represent a probability function. It's called a graphical model. Here's an example. Here's the probability function. Right? We start with the event A and the event B is a 
depends on event A. So it's a conditional probability. B given A. And the event C depends on uh, event A and event B. So let's use a graph to represent uh, this the relationship between the events. So we start with event A and then we use a direct edge, uh, directed edge to connect to the event B. This means that event B is depends on event A. Uh, so we use conditional probability. And then the event C depends on both the event A and the event B uh, and so on. Uh, event D depends on event B and the event E depends on event C. So use the graph can clearly illustrate the relationship of this probability distribution. The graphical model can help humans to understand the probability function better. To use probability model, we need to know the distribution of our data. But most of the time it's not possible. So we create some uh, probability distribution. The most common distribution is the normal distribution or called Gaussian distribution because it was proposed by Gauss. So it's a type of the normal distribution is a type of continuous probability distribution for a real value random variable. Or it's one of the most important distribution. Here is the formula of the normal distribution. There are two parameters in normal distribution. One is the mean and the another one is the sigma. So as long as we can calculate the mean and the standard deviation of our data set, then we can use normal distribution to uh, describe the, uh, our data. The output of the normal distribution is a bell shape, or bell curve. It looks like a bell. There are four different normal distribution in this picture. The first one is with the zero mean and the variance is 0 0.2. We can see that the distribution is tall and slim and locate the peak is located in the zero at the zero point. The second distribution has a larger variance, so it's the it's lower, right? And have a wider range of of data distribution. The third one is wider because it has a larger variance. So if the variance is small, it will concentrate in the center. Otherwise, it will be more flat. And if the mean is not zero, then the distribution is shift. Normal distribution implies that most data concentrate near the mean. So that's why it's called normal. For example, if we have a quiz today, we can expect the score distribution is like a normal distribution, usually a red one. That most of the students, the scores of most of the students will concentrate around the mean. Most of the students' score are close to the mean, so that's normal. Furthermore, the central limit theory states that the average of samples drawn from independent distribution converge to the normal distribution. What does that mean? It means that uh, the sample, usually we do not have the uh, information of the original distribution, so we will draw samples of a, uh, a distribution. Although the distribution, the original distributions uh, are not normal distribution, but the samples are drawn independently from the full distribution will be a normal distribution. So the sample mean distribution of four different distribution will be a normal distribution. Okay, so that's why we can safely choose normal distribution as our underlying model because the central limit theory.
A moderate probability distribution or main dream is Bernoulli distribution. Uh, Bernoulli distribution has only two events. Uh, the first is that the uh, random variable equals one, uh, the other one is random variable equals zero. Uh, so it's like a flip a coin. Uh, there are two outcomes uh, head or tail. Right, uh, so the probability of random variable equals one uh, is P uh, the part. and uh, the probability of a random variable equals zero is Q uh, and uh, because there are only two e events of uh, P plus Q is equal to one uh, so P is equal to one minus Q uh, that's the definition of Bernoulli so the probability mass function uh, so Bernoulli is a discrete uh, distribution and the probability probability mass function PMF is here. Huh? If k equals 1, then the output is p. Huh? The, the probability is p, otherwise the probability is q, and the q equals 1 minus p. Okay, the expected value of Bernoulli distribution is p, huh? because it's p multiplied 1 plus q multiplied by 0. Right, huh? So it's just a p, and the variance of the distribution is p multiplied by q. Now let's talk about information theory. Information theory was developed for communication, which transmit some information through a channel. The channel may be wired or wireless, like telephone or telegram. The Scientist and engineer wants to know how to encode and decode the information uh, to resist the noise. The idea, uh, the concept of information theory was formalized in 1948 by Claude Shannon in his paper entitled A Mathematical Theory of Communication. Machine learning borrows some idea from information theory. First, we need to define self-information. Shannon proposed that an information is reverse proportional to the probability of occurrence, which means that if the information, if the event has 100% probability of happened of occurrence then there's no information at all. So uh, the information is in reverse proportion to the probability of occurrence. And also uh, the information of two independent events can be added together. So Shannon choose the log function of the reciprocal of occurrence probability and is equal to minus log of probability of occurrence right so this is called self-information so the key measure in information theory is entropy oh, entropy and for the self-information we can choose different phase for the logarithm oh. In Shannon's entropy, he chose two, log two, because we usually use binary encoding for for the information in computer science. So the entropy is the probability uh, multiplied by the self-information. This is called Shannon entropy. Entropy is the expected value of self-information. Here is a picture shows the value of the entropy of Bernoulli variable. Remember that Bernoulli variable is a binary variable. So it has the highest value. The entropy is one when both both result, both outcome one and zero has equal probability, 0 0.5. We can use the expected value to calculate the entropy of 
the binary variable when both one and zero are zero point five. Here is the formula. So for the outcome is one is zero point five multiplied by log log two. Or remember the Shannon entropy is log two, and the the probability is one half. Okay, so the two outcome has same probability, right? And the log two one half is actually minus one. So the total entropy is one. On the other hand, if one uh, outcome uh, is totally uh, the x axis is the probability uh, of x equals one. Uh, so if the outcome is that one is zero, then it becomes one hundred percent that the one of the outcome is one uh, plus the minus zero multiply by in fact log zero is undefined right because we cannot uh, evaluate the information if the event never happened so this is undefined and uh, log one equals to zero so the total information is zero. The entropy is zero. Let's complete this formula. This zero means that the probability of because the x axis here is p probability of random variable x equals one. So the probability of x equals one is zero here and uh, it's undefined uh, self information is undefined so the total entropy h of x oh sorry let me let me let me refine the formula so the total matrix of x h of x is equal to zero oh. and uh, the maxima entropy is one when both uh, x equals one and x equals zero has uh, same probability of occurrence. We can use self-information to measure the difference between two probability distribution. This method is called KL divergence. KL divergence is also called the relative entropy. Here is the definition and the symbol of KL divergence. The DKL of P and Q is equal to the expected value of log P of X minus log Q of X and is equal to the expected value of log p of x divided by q of x. This is the definition of k of divergence. One thing to note is that the k of divergence is asymmetric, which means that d k of p and q is not equal to q uh, d k of uh, q and p. Here's an example from the uh, deep learning uh, book uh, written by Ian Goodfellow. Okay, suppose we have two probability distribution. One is uh, Q, which is the, the green one. And uh, we have a probability distribution P. Uh, we want to use Q to estimate the probability distribution P. P is actually the addition of two normal distribution. 
So our goal is to minimize the k or divergence between p and the q. So we can use q, oh, the result q star. So we want q star to be as similar as possible to as similar to p as possible. Oh. So the choice of k or divergence of pq and the qp will lead to different results. If we choose k or divergence p Q, uh, then the result, the Q star, will be like this. So it, it will uh, looks like the average of two normal distribution. However, if we choose the K of divergence QP, and then the results will look like this. Uh, the, our algorithm may decide to choose one of the mode of uh, probability distribution p also it may be either here or here so if the uh, solar choice of k or divergence uh, affects the results of the learning therefore remember that k or divergence is asymmetric the choice of pq or qp will lead to different models here are the key takeaways of today's class. First, the expected value, also called expectation, is mean or weighted average of a random variable. Event A and event B are independent if uh, PAB is equal to P of A multiplied by P of B. Event A and event B are mutually exclusive if the uh, probability p of a and b is equal to zero. The central limit theory tells us that normal distribution is the one uh, the one to go or the go-to distribution if we don't know uh, the underlying probability distribution of our data. If the data probability distribution is unknown, entropy is expected value of self-information. It's actually the minus expected value of log of p of x. KL divergence can measure the difference of two probability distributions and uh, it is asymmetric.